Hi and welcome to another episode of Fly Tying Step by Step. Today we are going to tie the green and chartreuse uh, pedagon nymph that I made with uh, green wire and a chartreuse nylon monofilament. So for this fly we are going to need the following. We will start off this fly with a size 12 G cook. You can use a any size from uh, 14 to, to 10. For the body I'm going to use some olive thread and then the body consists of a green wire and a chartreuse monofilament. For the tail material I'm going to use a grizzly hackle in olive. Great, if you are ready, let's get tying. First we're going to lay a thread base in the light olive thread, secure that bead. There we go. And now we can tie in our tail material, which is this olive hackle. Fibers, it's up to you. I'm going to use about six or so fibers. Tail length, I'm going just short of the shank length. Tie it in on top of your hook. That should do it. And secure it. Just make sure that it stays on top of your hook shank. Should do it. Maybe just shorten it a little bit. Now I can tighten down on it all the way up to the bead. See that bead is still a little bit loose. That's better. Now for the body. It's very simple. It looks difficult, but it's really simple. I tie in my wire. So I push my wire into the slotted bead and make a few wraps just to keep that in place. And then I come with my monofilament, lay that in the slot as well, and secure that with a few wraps as well. So, my lead and my chartreuse monofilament is lying side by side on top of my hook shank. So now I will just go back, just lifting them up a bit so that I can make sure that they lie next to each other and stay on top of this hook shank. I'm taking my time here just to make sure. So my first thread wraps to the back is not that tight. The reason is I want to make sure that my material lie next to each other, parallel to each other and stays on top of my hook shake. Now I will come in with tight wraps and just secure them properly back to the bead. I'm just putting a half inch there. And now for the wrapping. Okay. So first of all, what I do is I pick up my wire and I push it with my nail so I get a 90 degree bend in that wire. And I'll make my first wrap with my wire. 180 degree rotation there. Then I will come with my mono and I will wrap one wrap just next to the wire. So I've got my wire on my right hand side, your left hand side, and my mono on the left. Some people will take them like so with one wrap and, and try to wrap them. I find that the mono just 
moves off to the side the whole time. So what I do is I hold my mono in my one hand, take my wire in the other hand. So I've got my first wrap of wire and I've laid my mono next to that. Now I come with my wire, put it next to my mono. The wire is stiff so you can let go of that and then switch hands and come with my mono lying that flat against my wire and then I will just carry on that process. So let me just zoom out a bit. So there's my wire, there's my mono. I bring it up next to my wire and I wrap my wire down up to my mono. You can let go of the wire, it will stay in place and then I will just hold the wire secure and bring my mono around again. So if you get the hang of that, you can start just doing it in one motion, the two materials next to each other. Either wire slips out of your hand, that's fine. It will stay in place. Either mono slips out of your hand, it just unravels. Which is not really an issue. You can always just put it back in between the wire wraps. I've got a small piece of wire. I cut that too short, but it's fine. We will make it. Okay, so there I'm back at the bead. Don't let go of your mono. It will unravel on you. So I'm leaving the wire, because that will stay in place. And now, while holding the mono, I will just put one or two wraps over the wire to secure that. And then I will secure the mono as well with one or two wraps. Let's make it three. Okay, so let me zoom back in. Good, okay. So now we've got both materials on top of the hook shank again. I'm just going to secure it now with another one or two wraps in front of the wire and the mono. And this is what's important. I cut my wire. I'm using side cutters and I'm cutting it just above the um, bead. So that I push the tag in, into the slot. And the same with this mono. I'm cutting it also just short of the bead. And now I can use my thread and my finger and just push that into that slotted bead. So there's no sharp points at all that can put the fish off. With that done, I'm just creating a nut thread head and we'll finish it. Good. So with that done, that's basically the fly. All I'm going to do now is put some UV varnish on it. The UV varnish helps to smooth out the fly, gives a bit of sink rate, and also it creates that translucent look that you get to this fly. So I'm using a thin varnish. It seeps into the material and it really creates a very nice effect on this fly. Just make sure that you've got the whole fly covered with your UV. That seems to do it. Now we can just secure it with our torch. You can see how that 
monofilament just glows up. And now I just add a hot spot with some black nail polish. I prefer to just put it on top of the bead so that it just seeps into that little slot. And I'll just leave it upside down so that it doesn't bleed too much over the bead and fly. That looks great. And after it cured properly, I will just put some Halle, uh, Sally Hansen's hardest snails on that. But that is your green wire monofilament pedicle. Thank you for watching Fly Tying Step by Step. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to subscribe to our channel. Also, you can like our Facebook page. Join us there. Ring that bell on YouTube so that you can get notified of new patterns that we will post. Enjoy your day. Bye.